So anyways, I'm going to start off and ask you a question. There's something I've been working on lately. And it actually started in this room. I was giving a talk, I don't know, like maybe eight years ago, and I started talking about the vote. And a woman in the audience said, very angry, and she said, man, I heard enough about the vote. When are we going to do something? And I thought, wow, you know, she's right. And so I've been thinking lately, I've been thinking about, well, there's two things. I've been thinking about starting a website where people can download software in order to identify themselves as a special interest group and then find other people who agree with their interests and then take that from the virtual world to the real world. The reason that I want to do it, and I want to see what you think about this, is my understanding that rather than living in a democracy, by default, we're living in a mostly benevolent oligarchy. Oligarchy, yes, benevolent. But the business of the vote is really important. We live in a culture, and you can see this by what television is decided to put in this paper on site. Everything is built around the vote. Everything is built around who is going to be the next president. Because we all learn, as we're going on in this country, that we need the most important thing is who is president and who is in Congress. And what we should have learned by now, if we really learn history, or if we just look around and talk about it, is that the president, Congress, the Supreme Court, they get all the attention. But the fact is, we cannot depend on them to bring about state justice and equality in this country. It is up to us. That's why what you're saying about the internet is really people together, grassroots groups, making connections. I mean, that's democracy. Right. But, you know, you've got a junior high school and they teach you what democracy is and they, they put on board the three branches of government and they talk about checks and balances. And, you know, that's not democracy. I mean, it, it, it's just one kind of very bureaucratic, like, wing of democracy. Yeah. No, it's, you know, democracy is what people do for themselves. If you look through history, what you find is that where we've had really serious problems to solve that have been solved by the President, or by Congress, or by the Supreme Court, the President and Congress and the Supreme Court, they react to the social movements that, that exist in the country. And so, slavery was not simply abolished because they had no issue of the emancipation of population. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, that's, the this emancipation proclamation came after 30 years of grassroots agitation by black people and some white people, you know, who were creating a great movement. And you've seen that more recently, right? We couldn't depend on even the local so-called liberal presidents, Johnson, Kennedy, to enforce the 14th and 15th amendments. <laughs> And what happened, black people had to go out in the streets and you know, all over the South and risk their lives in order to make sure that the 14th and 15th Amendments were finally enforced. That, that, that can get me curious, right? But, uh, <laughs> but even like, you know, like I'll be in the Midwest and I'll be talking, you know, to some, you know, old guy out there and, and they'll be saying, they'll be explaining to me how their medical insurance isn't working, how their retirement isn't working how their children are making the exact same salary that they were making 20 years ago. Um, and, and so, knowledge alone doesn't seem to create enough of an impetus to change. You can tell that people know the inadequacy of voting by the fact that half the people in the country don't vote in presidential elections. Why don't they vote? Because they, I think, don't believe that the voting is going to be anything. And even 50% of people who do vote don't know this. They vote without enthusiasm. Yeah. Because what choice do they have? You know. And you know, I once saw a bumper sticker that said, if God has in, had intended us to vote, he would have given us candidates. <laughs> <laughs> But to me, so you know, people know this a lot. 
It's amazing. It's amazing that people know as much as they do, considering the fact that the media, television, newspapers do their best to keep people ignorant. Learn how much power they have. You know, it's... Well, I'm thinking of the South, you know, where I live and with my family from the years of movement, you know, in the late 50s and early 60s, it was South. And a lot of people knew what their lives were like. But it took a while to transform that knowledge into this fantastic movement. And that movement is a young part, right? It was. Because I'm one prompt I have today, I'll talk to I'll talk to somebody and I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll make a suggestion. I'll say, well, why don't you get this young uh, woman or this young guy uh, to lead your organization? I said, well, they're only 27. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, that's how Martin Luther King was when they did the boycott. You know, he was different. They don't make people like him. <laughs> you know, there's that, that kind of, but, that, but that's a self-defeating notion, right? But it, it, and, 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 and that, that becomes part of it. And, and another thing, like, another step beyond that, that, that is connected to that. I'll, I'll, I'll say to somebody, say, well, who you vote for? And I say, well, you know, who I vote for doesn't matter. How I vote, how I identify myself matters. And then they don't hear that. And they say, well, I like Barack Obama, so let's say, you know, Bill Clinton, Rudy Giuliani, I don't know. But they say somebody. And, and I, they say, well, so let's say they say Barack. And I say, they say, I like him. And I say, well, do you know him? <laughs> like, and they say, well, yeah, I know what he stands for. I said, well, what does he stand for, right? And, you know, I know not live in Harvard. You thought you knew that, and you were wrong. And, and, and you, you understand, I'm, I'm trying to say this, the question of, of there's some knowledge that we, that we believe we have that we don't really have. Mm. I like people have, like, you know, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and all They're like rock stars. But well, we don't need them to have as their heroes the people in the anti-slavery movement, the people who led working people, the labor organizers, the Cesar Chavez, the boycotters, we want them to to learn you know, about the anti-war people, about the, those who protested our various wars. We want them to learn about socialists and anarchists and dissenters, the kind of people you don't know, read about in history. Like the Thomas Paine, sometimes he's left out of this. It's such an important uh, figure. So I'm, I'm a revolutionary guy. So we need new steps of heroes, you know, people, not, be, not just the Columbus and not the other so people, not Andrew Jackson, we need family and Hamer and Bob Moses, we need the right Bob Moses. Little left. Little left. But part of the problem is, of course, I mean, or, or, what, what, seems, what, what seems to me a, a, a problem is that you came up with this problem. You know, we're not really a democracy, but there are a few very, very powerful, rich people who are at the top of the poor society. They think you're being unpatriotic. Yeah. And they, they use that word unpatriotic and they forget what patriotism really is. The patriotism is love of your country, it's not love of your government. <laughs> There's a difference between the government and the country. Yeah, I don't have to love your country. Come to think of it, you know. <laughs> and, you know, and so you see the television cameras focus on young men in uniform going up to Iraq, and sometimes they'll say, and, and tell me, young man, why did you enlist? And you know, or are you a woman? Well, because I believe I owe something to my country, mm -hmm. I want to fight for my country. They don't even know they mm -hmm. They're not going to fight for their country. They're going to fight for Bush and Cheney and Halliburton. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to fight for the corporations that make profit out of the war. Mm -hmm. uh, the country doesn't need war. The country doesn't need to spend this huge, huge sums of money, trillions of dollars on war. The country needs to take care of people here, to take care of people elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That's the country. And, uh, and I think when the government acts against the interests of our country, it wants to tear it down. I was no, no, thinking no. you would say something like that. No, no, no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I love it uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, it's a shame, right? It's just that you know, Pelosi doesn't uh, uh, vote uh, to, to try to impeach Bush, that she's going to run against it. That's democracy. 
Say, you're not doing what I want, so I'm going to run against you and see if the people agree with me or if the people agree with you. It's not just about what they're going to agree with you. And so that would be really great. I, and I think that to say that we need to tear the government down is not a bad thing. You know, the government, the government doesn't represent us. Well, you know, when you say tear the government down, I mean, the writers of the Declaration of Independence didn't use those exact words, but they said basically the same thing. Because in the Declaration of Independence, which, by the way, the leaders of our government really don't want us to read very carefully, the Declaration of Independence says that when governments become destructive of the rights of equality of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, when governments become destructive of those, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish the government. And certainly, right now, it is our right to impeach the President and Vice President.